So welcome back to another episode, and this is a continuation from my last episode that I did, and I did this about six or seven months ago, and it was RPGs I tried to like. Now, I'm a big RPG fan, I have been since 1987. I've loved all of the games, but there's some games that I just could not connect to, no matter how hard I tried, and, and I've really tried with some of these games, I really have, and these games are not necessarily bad, I've just not had an emotional connection. Some of these games are quite good, but they just didn't connect to me on an emotional level or any kind of level. I just, I kept trying though. Some of these games I spent 40 hours into to try to get something out of, and in the end I was just like, huh? I can't connect to it. And that's okay, not every game that we're gonna play is gonna be uh, an instant connection where we go, this is the best game I've ever played and I'm so happy to play it. That doesn't happen every time. If that was the case, every single game would be awesome and that's not the case. So I just thought I'd go through some of the games today that I couldn't really connect to and I thought I'd ask you guys once again, what are some RPGs that you were super hyped for? You're like, I can't wait for this game to come out. And when it came out, it kind of, kind of crushed you a little bit and inside you went, oh, Darn it. Now to start off with, some of these games were on the Xbox 360 and uh, some of them came to the PlayStation 3 as well and we had a very unusual time in the beginning of the Xbox where a lot of games are coming out and uh, a lot of RPGs and they, they came out with very mixed results. They were very soulless games and that's that's actually what I want to discuss with some of these games. They're, they're quite good graphically, they're not bad, but they're soulless games and uh, the first one that I wanted to get into uh, it's not necessarily a soulless game, but it's just a very average game. And I had a lot of hype towards it, and that was Blue Dragon by Mistwalker. And this was an Xbox 360 exclusive RPG. And one that we were all excited about. The father of Final Fantasy was developing the game, writing the story. The original composer of Final Fantasy was doing the music. How could we go wrong? How could we go wrong with this? And you know what? They didn't go wrong. It's just a very, very average game. And I remember thinking this is like the ultimate game. This is gonna be like Final Fantasy for the 360. And we got that a little bit later, which was uh, Lost Odyssey. But Blue Dragon, at first I had such high hopes for him. Like this game is gonna be the greatest RPG I've ever played. I love Akira Toriyama designs. You know, and Chrono Trigger and Dragon Quest. How can, how can it go wrong? And it was just so okay. It was. The battle system was pretty good. Like you had personas that were dragons that would come out of you. They were magical attacks to attack your enemies. They were fun to look at. The combat was good. Combat was a little long at times. I think that was one thing. And a lot of screen tearing in this game. A lot of screen tearing, especially during combat where that kind of uh, took a little bit out of it, but still not so bad. The music was okay. The battle music is really good, but the rest of the music was just Okay, it's just average the best. The story was so generic. It's like, yeah, I've been and done this a thousand times in a million other RPGs, and that's not a bad thing, but maybe we were all expecting a little something more from Blue Dragon, and I think it delivered on giving a really great RPG game, but it didn't do anything outside of the box, and I think that's why we were a little disappointed with the game. Uh, but you know, honestly, I was playing it capturing footage, and I was like, look at the graphics in this game. They're so... Good, I couldn't believe it. Uh, how nice they looked after all of this time. And this is a game from like nine years ago and I think it still holds up really well. If you don't have Blue Dragon, I didn't connect to this game, but I'm super happy I have it. I would say go out and try to get this game. You can probably get it from you know 10 to $20, completely worth it. Uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed if you're looking for just kind of like a, a fun kind of RPG, but don't expect anything more from it. Uh, but other than that, pretty good game. Now, here's the, the very beginnings of the Xbox 360. A game was coming out, and I remember seeing like trailers for this game and going, wow, this looks like a beautiful thing. I can't, you know, the Xbox 360 was really showing uh, what it could do, you know, that and the PS3 at the time was like, these are next generation graphics. And I was hyped, Eternal Sonata. I love the character design for the main girl. I thought, okay, it's like a kind of a pretty-esque type of game. It's gonna be one of those types of games. I'm open to that. And I started playing it and the combat was just so boring. <laughs> boring. I, unfortunately, I just couldn't get into it. I just couldn't connect to this game. And 
the music wasn't too bad. I, I was capturing footage earlier on. I was like, oh yeah, I remember this kind of music. I was a little nostalgic for it because it'd been years since I heard it, but it didn't do anything to really excite me. And most of my friends bought this game and we all felt the same way that it was just so kind of like, eh. You know, we, we wanted it to be yay, but it was just ah. Eh. And sometimes that's the way it goes with certain video games. And yeah, it's funny, like I was watching the opening cinematic and this was me during it. I don't know how much time I have left to live, but I want to live what's left of my life in a positive way, bringing happiness to others. I just want to help people somehow. Like these flowers, even though people call them death lights, they still blossom and struggle to live on. I just call this the case of uh, an early launch game on the 360, one that they were just trying to get out to, you know, get in on the next generation to create a certain, you know, an action RPG, and it just failed to hit the mark. And uh, I always wanted Eternal Sonata to be a lot better. I didn't want it to be a game that I just thought was average. Uh, what did you guys think of Eternal Sonata? I, I thought it was okay. Now we go back to the past a little bit, to the Genesis. A great RPG machine for anybody who used to play the Genesis back then. We had Sword of Million, we had the Fantasy Star games, the list goes on. It was a really good RPG system. Shining in the Darkness was announced and this was a game that I was like, oh my god, the next you know, the next fantasy star. This will be the next fantasy star. And I blame this on myself, I think. I think I was hoping for a really, an open world environment like fantasy star and you know, where you just, you know solve things and do things within the world itself. And I got the game and I was looking forward to the 3D dungeons in this game. Let me say that first of all, I was looking forward to them. They looked incredible in screenshots. Like fantasy stars graphics looked for the dungeons, 3D dungeons, were pretty good for the time, but Shining in the Darkness was showing really, you know, what you could do with the Genesis graphics, and I, I couldn't wait to see the animation, and I, I had all this imagination going on in my mind, because all I could read at the time was video game magazines, and they were talking about how great the animation of the monsters were. You know, when you see water, you know, attacks and stuff like that, you, you couldn't believe it. It was so mind-boggling, you know, you'll, you'll be blown the fuck away. And so I went in, I was overhyped. Even back in the Genesis days, before No Man's Sky and all those games, you could be overhyped. And I was a little overhyped going into this. And I started off in the game and I was like, oh, this is kind of okay. And it reminded me of Arcana, you know, where it's like side scrolling uh, shops and uh, characters that you could talk to and you could kind of go into a little bar and talk to people. I thought that was cool. So I was like, okay, that's fine. I love the character designs. That's great stuff. And then I was like, okay, I guess this is just a starting hub and then we'll go from there. I didn't realize that this was the main hub of the game. It was just kind of exactly like Arcana in a lot of ways. It was reminding me of that. And I started off and I, I went in to the first dungeon and it was not bad, but I just, I was like, oh, it's just a, a dungeon exploring game. I, I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting. I was expecting maybe more, a story, more of a connection with the characters. And I didn't really get that, but it's not a bad dungeon game. I have a lot of friends that like the game. That think the game's really cool. They got a lot further into the game and enjoyed it. I kind of just got, kind of, kind of got into it and I, Bought a bunch of battles and I got a little bit more into it a couple hours in and I was like, I don't know if this is really for me. It's not really connecting to me on an emotional level. But I still look back on Shining in the Darkness. I love the name, Shining in the Darkness. What a brilliant name and I like the dungeons. I do like the monster designs. I like the aesthetics of the game. I do like the music as well. But I just didn't connect to it. I, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck. A, a case of the overhypes, as I say. So. Yeah, those are a few of the games, guys, that I want to talk about today, and it's kind of fun. I must admit, I had a lot of fun going back and capturing the footage uh, for some of these games. Eternal Sonata, Blue Dragon, and then I even did some for uh, Re Renaissance of Fates and uh, The Last Remnant. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I forgot about that game. That, that's another game I could really bring up. The Last Remnant was... Wow, a game I was really hoping would be a lot better, and it was just like, ah. And I... Eight years ago, I released uh, a review of the game. It's that long ago by Square Enix, and we had big hype and big uh, hopes for The Last Remnant. And it was 
okay. It wasn't even okay. I, I didn't like it. I didn't connect to it. So, guys, what are some games that you were really excited about? You really wanted to be awesome, and you were a little let down. Maybe a case of the overhypes, as I mentioned, and or maybe the game just didn't live up to it. Maybe it just was a bad game. Uh, mention it down below. So, anyways, guys, until next time.